Welcome to How to Thrive Over 40. I wanted to create a teaching for people over 40 about how to overcome your challenges, live your full potential, feel fit, wealthy, healthy, and happy, and balanced in all areas of your life. And to have the confidence to be who you really want to be. And maybe who you already know you can be. You're just not, you've not been able to live that out yet. I myself am over 40. I'm living my best life. I meditate. I am doing what I love. I'm a professional athlete still at 42 years old, living in my highest values, which ultimately feels like you are living your full potential, doing what you love, living in what is at the center of your heart. I feel fit, wealthy, healthy, happy, and as confident as I can. And I'm very happy with who I'm becoming. I'm also thriving on a plant-based diet, and I have done for over eight years now. I lose count on how many years, but it's definitely been almost a decade. And I'm successful as a guide, a coach, and a spiritual fitness mentor, helping people live more fulfilled lives and doing the work necessary, the courageous warrior work to crack their hearts open so that they can live their full potential. And I inspire them to believe in themselves and I show them what is possible through doing my very best to walk my talk, to be an example, so that rather than telling people how to live their life, I can show them what it looks like and then let them choose to learn from me if they wish. So if you want to choose to be here for this teaching, in advance, I look forward to serving you. This is for you if <clears throat> you are over 40, like I shared before, and you're looking to overcome your challenges. You believe that you are not living your full potential and you know that you can make improvements in your overall well-being. Maybe you've seeked out guidance before, but what you've tried hasn't worked and you are inspired to live a more fulfilling life. And maybe that's the reason why you've ended up listening to this. I know that this is right for you if you want to focus on becoming fit, feeling wealthier internally without attachment to anything on the external because nothing on the external is permanent, that you have a desire to be healthier and happy or even happier than you currently are. This is for you if you want to build more confidence and have more conviction around your goals and you are committed to embracing and becoming your true self, the real you, and you're open to adapting new ways or new ways, new paths, or adapting to new ways and new paths that can take you out of the known, which is everything in the past, and step into the unknown and into the maybe uncomfortable. That could be spiritual practices. It could be meditation. It could be adopting more of a plant-based diet or pursuing different ways of finding success and fulfillment and just willing to learn new things and try new things to improve various aspects of your life. As I share my own success in my journey, I aim to inspire and show you how you too can achieve similar transformations and live your best life. Firstly, what tends to happen when we get older 
is our limiting beliefs start to creep in more and more and more. You know, we start saying things like, I'm too old. I'm not the person that I used to be. And these are all just lies. Because there's many examples in the world of people that have only quote unquote made it at 50, 60, even 70. So the first very important thing to pay attention to is having the awareness of the power of your mind, the power of your thoughts, and how this will impact you in achieving success and happiness. Our thoughts are exactly that. They're our thoughts, but they are not our identity. Now, when you have negative thoughts with this awareness, you cannot label them as you. There are just experiences, temporary moments in time. But also, because we get to choose our thoughts, we can choose responsibly and consciously to think better in a way that it's more positively impactful in our lives and in a way that it's more aligned to success real success which is the feeling of fulfillment and happiness and even inner peace in a harmony and in a balance in identifying and overcoming our limiting beliefs we need to even though we're older maybe 50 60 70 or in your 40s you need to be willing to continue to keep yourself in a growth mindset and learn the techniques to cultivate a positive and growth orientated mind frame and doing whatever it takes through coaching, through podcasts, through books, audio books, masterminds, getting in the right environments, just keep yourself open to being in a growth mindset every single time. Because if we're not growing, we're dying. So look for ways, as many ways as you can, to keep opening up your mind, expanding your awareness, and growing from that newfound awareness. In Buddhism, it is said that the three root causes of our suffering are greed, anger, and ignorance. Related to this example about limiting beliefs and having a growth mindset, thinking that you are done, thinking that there is nothing more to learn. There's nowhere more to go into or grow into. This in itself, this belief or this thought, this creates suffering. So to end your suffering around your thoughts, train your mind, train yourself, train your mind to believe and to know in your mind as well as in your heart that I'm never finished. There is always more to learn. There's always more to study. And ultimately, there's always more to become. And what is helpful is visualization. Vision boards, visualization meditations, visualization practices, journaling what it is that you want to see in your life, it's often said that you need to believe it to see it. But the truth is it's the other way around. You have to see it to believe it. And if you can't see the vision of what you want, of a compelling future, it'll be very difficult for you to believe that, you've, that you can even make it happen. And how can your mind be, or how can your mind have a single point focus and be so focused on your vision and help you make decisions towards your vision if you don't even know exactly what you want and you cannot see that better life, that better future for you. <clears throat> so that brings us to vision. 
to thrive in your 40s and beyond, you've got to keep having a powerful vision for your life. Reflecting on your core values, your priorities, what's important to you, what matters to you most, and then in alignment with those core values, create a vision for your life. Because as long as you are living in your values and you're moving towards a vision that is alignment in those values, your success will never be in front of you. You can bring your success into the present by knowing what you value most and creating a powerful future vision and staying aligned with those values towards your vision or aligned in your values towards that vision. And then to have goals, never stop having goals because not having goals and not ticking off goals or performance achievements actually lowers our confidence because we're not growing, we're not becoming. Whereas when you have goals, every time you tick them off, your confidence goes up again and again and again. Your well-being goes up again and again and again. So have goal-setting strategies in your life for different aspects of your life, but really for all areas of your life. Have as many goals as you want. Have as many goals as you can. But definitely in the areas of wealth, health, and happiness. And that can include relationships. What are your goals around personal fulfillment? Craft a powerful vision on these. And maybe create a, power, a powerful vision board that you can put up somewhere to reinforce your aspirations and help you maintain focus towards this vision. And remember, stay in your values. A life lived in your highest values is a happy life. A life lived outside of your highest values is a compromised life. And it's a life of suffering. When I ordained and lived as a Buddhist monk for a short time, one of my teacher monks, when, us, when we were having a conversation about values, because I've been teaching on values and living in pursuing a life in my values for a long time, it's something I'm extremely passionate about. I asked my teacher monk, what's your thoughts on this? And he very simply said that imagine if on your left hand is your life and imagine on your right hand are your values. Put your two hands together. When your two hands are together, your life matches your values. This is what creates happiness, inner peace, and inner harmony. But now if you start to pull your hands away from each other, this is what the monk said. The greater the gap, the greater the suffering. So, if you want less suffering in your life, keep doing the work, the courageous warrior work, because it's not comfortable. If it was comfortable, if it, would, if it was easy, everyone would be living in their highest values, levitating down the street. It's hard work. But you can do what's hard now and have an easy life, or you can continue to do what's easy and live a hard life. And maybe not now, but if you do what's easy and you live a comfortable life, an easy life, you might have a, a hard, difficult future. So the next thing to thrive in your 40s is to recognize common challenges faced by people over 40. You know, you are not alone. <laughs> Whatever problems you think you have, Everyone, or at least most people, have those problems. So connect with other people like yourself that don't want to settle, that believe there is more to life. Connect with people that believe it is okay to press the reset button on your life, to start again, to go in a new direction, and gather as much inspiration and knowledge as possible 
so that you can have a toolbox of effective strategies to overcome your own challenges. One of my mentors once said to me, and I've shared it many times with my clients and my students and, and followers online. He said, if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. You also want to have not only strategies for overcoming your challenges, but strategies to build resilience. Many people go to the physical gym, but not enough people go to the spiritual gym. And what does it mean? I recently spoke on a retreat. I hosted a retreat actually in Thailand, a meditation retreat. And I was speaking to people about spiritual fitness. And I asked everyone in the room, what does spiritual fitness mean to you? And although I agreed with everything that my guests shared or that our guests shared, a few of them said what I wanted them to know. And it's that if you had to define spiritual fitness with one word, it's resilience. It's knowing to be patient and being persistent in going after your goals and in changing and transforming your life. Resilience is the root or at the core of being spiritually fit. Even in the military, they train on spiritual fitness, and that's to make soldiers more resilient so that they stay, tr stay strong, that they keep doing the work, and that they never settle, they never retreat, they never, ab they never abandon. And in this particular example, around thriving over 40, you don't abandon yourself. You don't abandon your truth. You don't abandon your values and what is most important to you at the center of your heart. So keep building on your resilience through stretching yourself, creating stretch goals, studying resilience, and of course, practicing meditation. Because meditation teaches us both patience and persistence. Something else, uh, something else that I've been speaking on recently is martial arts and the power of martial arts. And you will hear me talk about this a lot in the future going forward. Because actually recently I just, I came to the knowing that this has to be one of the pillars that I talk on going forward and that I coach on because it's been such a strong pillar in my life. So keep building your resilience. Do it through meditation. Do it through any form of martial arts from Qigong to Tai Chi to Muay Thai to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Western boxing, both meditation and martial arts teach you and teach you patience and persistence and condition you to be someone, not to know resilience, but to be someone that is resilient, someone that never gives up, someone that always stays in their strength, in their courage, someone that keeps in momentum, keeps moving forward, and someone that never, ever settles for less than who they know they can be, what they know they can do, and what they know they can have. The next thing I wanted to share on thriving over 40 or how to thrive over 40 is about optimizing your health and your fitness if you think fitness is about fitness, you've seriously missed the point. One of my good friends, great friends actually, Daniel Priestley once said that to me. I can't remember if he said fitness, but uh, he was talking about something. But he said, if you think it's about this, you've seriously missed the point. Fitness is not about fitness. It is about to go back to what I just shared with you. It's about building resilience. It's about building confidence. It's about building certainty. It's about creating energy in your body, vitality in your mind, body, and spirit. 
Couldn't you use more of this in your life? In your 40s, 50s, and 60s, don't you want more resilience, more energy, more vitality, more confidence, even more compassion? What is compassion? Well, one thing I often say is compassion is simply giving yourself permission. So by taking care of yourself and your health and your fitness, you prove to yourself that you love yourself enough to not settle. You practice self-compassion. And with that compassion comes courage and confidence and clarity and conviction. It's all for you to create. It's all for you to have. Understand the importance of physical health and the impact it has on your overall well-being. Listen to podcasts, read books, listen to audio books, study longevity, study energy, study breath, study meditation. The deeper you go, the wiser you become. Couldn't you use a little bit more wisdom? Knowledge is not power. Wisdom is power. Because I'm sure you know at least one a very knowledgeable, stupid person. And I say that playfully, but knowledge is just knowledge. But knowing what to do and not doing what you know is foolish. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. So study health, study fitness, study well-being for the rest of your life because your future depends on it. Your future health, your future energy, your future happiness, your future fulfillment, your future movement, future mobility, your future life depends on what you know and what you do. And then with that, don't just go through the rest of your life without a plan. Like in business, have a plan. Have a health plan. Have a happiness plan. Have a fitness plan. Have a well-being plan and stick to the plan. Create a plan suitable for where you are in life, geographically, where you are in terms of your location. Do you travel to work or are you already at home, retired or semi-retired or working from home? Make it suitable for your lifestyle. It's your life. You get to create your own plan. But failing to plan is planning to fail. So create that plan and get support, get help if you need. But like I shared, you can go online. We are inundated with information and knowledge. So go out there and study like your life depends on it because it truly does. And really be willing to explore. I'm not putting my values on you or saying that you have to be this way. But I do what I do, and I've done what I do for 20 years because I give a shit. I really care. I don't want to suffer, and I don't want other people to suffer. So be willing to explore, only explore, the benefits of adopting to a plant-based diet. A diet that helps you thrive. A diet that provides you with super nutrition. A diet that gets rid of unhealthy fat, unwanted fat in the body. A diet that helps you sleep better at night. I'm not going to into, go into it again because I know some people are touchy on this and that's not what this program is about. But if you like what I've said so far, I just ask you to explore it and also explore the other side of that, the costs of living on a, what I call animal diet and the trauma that is put or the energy more related to this teaching, the energy that is put into your food from, well, let me start again. I'm sure you will agree that 
everything in the world is energy. Everything is vibrating. Everything is vibrating at a certain frequency and frequencies change all the time. Eat from vitality, eat from health, eat from energy. Eat from nutritious foods, organic, etc. But if you think of where animal products come from, there is extraordinary amount of trauma that is attached to that food. And by the time that food goes down to the slaughterhouse in, I don't know what the exact word for it is, but the lane where the animal is about to have its life taken from them. They are shaking, they are screaming, they are crying, and all this trauma is trapped in the animal. And then you go and eat that food on an energy or a frequency chart. This food is very low vibration. And you are what you eat. So consuming low vibration, low energy, whether that's through food, through toxic drinks, through toxic habits, drinking, smoking, drugs, etc., and even information, the news, etc., anything low frequency will create a low frequency in you. It's why you can have a like um, a Tibetan singing bowl, you know, these brass bowls that you hit it and it goes, ding, but you put it on your body and you feel that vibration through your body. It enters your body through the frequency. And you're taking in that frequency when you're eating death. So do you want to consume death? And do you want to consume low vibration foods and consume low vibration everything from news to nutrition and therefore live from a place of low vibration, guilt, shame, um, anger, resentment, not being able to forgive. These are all on the low frequency chart. Or do you want to live with more inner harmony, with more energy, with more vitality, by eating healthier foods for you. I personally am vegan for, like I said, almost a decade. I did it for compassionate reasons. I just realized that I am what I eat and I want to be compassion. So how can I be compassion with not being compassionate in my choices? So that's been a large part of my, my life's work is to keep aligning my decisions to that of compassionate decisions or, or or being a compassionate individual. But for this particular example, this is about health and vitality and energy and longevity. It's not a coincidence that the most expensive or most well-known or most famous healing retreats around the world where people go with autoimmune diseases, stage three, stage four cancer, don't take my word for it. Go look online and you'll see that all of these centers have a vegan diet. If not all, definitely most of them. And that's because it is the healthiest diet for curing dis-ease and to taking yourself to your natural energy and vitality. I mean, what is disease? It's just the absence of energy. It's the absence of health. It's the absence of vitality. It's the absence of wellness. So eat food that is healthy. Eat food that gives you vitality, that gives you energy. And think of where the food comes from. Live consciously when it comes to your food choices. Next thing. Next share or teaching on how to thrive over 40. And you know, just to be clear, I'm not saying that my way is the only way. What I'm sharing with you and why I'm sharing it with you is because I've dedicated my entire life to number one, understanding why we suffer and how we cannot suffer. 
And number two, understanding why certain people thrive and sharing how we can all thrive. And these have been my findings over the last 20 years. The next thing I encourage you to do is to, when it comes to your job, your vocation, your career, even just your passion, if you're not working full time, is to do what you love, to do something that gives you purpose. If you look at the blue zones around the world and where people live to be the oldest know, a hundred years old and beyond now, look at one common denominator. Actually, what you'll find is what I mentioned previously. You will find that most of these countries and most of these, in most of these cultures, people eat, if not predominantly plant-based, they eat plant-based. But also what they do very well is they live a purposeful life. Now, here's an example of the power of purpose. A couple, a married couple, for example, that had been married 40, 50 years or something, they can live till their 80s, to their 90s, have nothing wrong with them. And then one of them gets ill. And often we hear stories of when one person passes away in a relationship like this, Months or even weeks later, the other person passes away. And that's because that person has lost their purpose. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be in a relationship. <laughs> it just means that I wish a long relationship until your latest years for everyone. But it means that you need to have a purpose. You need to have something that makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning. You need to have a reason to get up, a reason to live, a reason to serve, a reason to be alive. Actually, I re once read many years ago, Dr. Victor E. Frankl's book, A Man's Search for Meaning, about his experience in concentration camps in the World War, including Auschwitz. And he would say that, or he said in his book, A Man's Search for Meaning, he said that the death toll always rose between Christmas and New Year in the camps. And that's because all year people would say, I'll be out by Christmas. I'll be out by Christmas. I'll be out by Christmas. And then when Christmas came and they were not out and they were still there, they gave up hope. And now they had nothing to look forward for, uh, nothing to look forward to. And people would just start dying. This is the power of purpose. Your purpose is your reason for being. It's your reason to keep fighting. It's your reason to keep moving. It's your reason to never settle. And without purpose, there is no passion. And without passion, there is no life. There's only existence. So keep having or keep building and living with a powerful purpose. And it can be whatever you want. It can be gardening. Gardening can be your purpose. But just have something in your life that you're passionate about. Do what you love and love what you do till the day you die. <laughs> because the alternative is to not do what you love, to not truly live, to get to the end of your life at your death, wondering if you ever truly lived. How we, truly, how we know that we are truly living is by waking up with gratitude and appreciation and going to bed every night with satisfaction and celebration because we've lived a life of purpose. We've lived a day of purpose. We've lived a meaningful life. And in my life, one of the observations that I've made is that most people find a job to get a certain amount of money. And then in the time that they have outside of their job and with the money that they have left over, they create space for their life, like holidays. And at an early age or in my mid twenties, I realized that that was not the right way. The right way 
was to get clear on what your greatest life looks like and then to get a job or a business that supports that. To create the greatest life that you can the best that you can do in this moment, it's not going to be perfect, but to create a life that is, to your knowledge, the best that you can have right now, the best person you can be, the best you can do with your life. And then to create something to do with passion and purpose that supports that financially. So that's my take on that. Now, I touched on relationships before going over 40, I think, or well, I know that relationships become more important than probably ever before in your life. Because when I was in my 20s and my 30s, I was just busy, man. I was busy pushing, creating, changing, thriving, suffering, playing, being so busy with my life but generally speaking, from around 40 to 50, you start slowing down. So when your life is not filled with all of this stuff, there's a bit of a hole left there, which is why it's incredibly important to surround yourself with like-minded and like-hearted people. That can be your friends, your family, your colleagues, old friends, new friends. It can be going to retreats, joining a mastermind of like-minded and like-hearted people, getting into a coaching community, going to events. You know what I love to see? I love to see other coaches, including the most well-known coach in the world, Tony Robbins. And he runs these massive events online and other teachers do as well. And I love looking in the room because I'm an obsessed student. I will be for my entire life. I love looking in these rooms online and seeing people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s just absolutely coming alive. Why? Because they're around other people that are energy givers. People in our life are either radiators or drains. They're either radiating energy and giving us energy or they're draining our energy. Create and nurture powerful relationships in your life, compassionate relationships, unconditional relationships in your life, meaning there's no, oh, I'll give you this and I expect something back. Just be around giving people and give to those people too and thrive together because like I shared before, if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. Align your values to the relationships in your life and rely, uh, align the relationships in your life to your values. Are the relationships in your life taking you towards your vision or are they pulling you away from your vision? Are they helping you grow and maintain a growth mindset or are they making you believe that you're old or middle-aged? What are the healthy relationships doing to you and for you? Recognize that and then do something about it. Recognizing it is the first thing, your awareness, but awareness is not the only step to changing and transform, uh, transforming your life. First, with the awareness, have the understanding of the significance of the relationships in your life, and then with that awareness, get into action and commit to creating more powerful, healthy, happy relationships that will lead you to a more fulfilling life. And don't settle in meeting new people. Study relationships. Study communication skills. Keep growing like I shared before. Keep growing and learning how to enhance your connections with loved ones and colleagues and how to be better at networking, socializing, connecting with more people because at the end of your life, one of the things you will say, and actually this is part of a study, I think it was the longest study that's ever been done on human beings. I think it was 75 years of studying. I can't remember how many people. And they asked them, what was the most important thing in your life? And they said it was relationships. So if you are a result of your relationships, 
assess the relationships in your life and look at where you want to go and be honest with yourself and and ask yourself is is there a match here or is this a mismatch and therefore what do i need to change also don't hold on to in your current relationships don't hold on to things that don't give you health and energy and vitality resolve conflicts Foster positive relationships and sort out the relationships that are causing you suffering in your life. Suffering and dis-ease. We want less dis-ease and more harmony. How can you get rid of the dis-ease in your relationships? And how can you bring in more harmonious relationships in your life? Now, I hope this has been helpful so far. Next thing I believe will help you thrive over 40 is something that I love to talk on, and that's authenticity and self-confidence. The greatest freedom in the world is the freedom to be yourself. I encourage or highly encourage daily self-reflection to discover and embrace your authentic true self, your unique strengths, what makes you weird, and once again, what you value most. And learn ways to, because for you to live your authentic self, it takes confidence. And with that confidence, you get courage and you develop compassion for yourself, giving yourself permission to be who you really want to be. So therefore, study confidence. Study or learn techniques for boosting your own self-confidence. And self-confidence is a learnable skill. I don't care how old you are, what you believe, probably for the first 20 years of my life, I did not have confidence. I built my confidence. I created my confidence by raising my awareness, by learning the techniques and doing the work, by stretching myself over and over again, by creating powerful beliefs and having those beliefs supported by evidence. So create evidence after evidence after evidence after evidence. Go for a run, do a 10K, do a half marathon, do a full marathon, do an Ironman triathlon, jump out of a plane, do whatever you need to do to keep building that evidence that you have confidence. And with that confidence going up, so will your well-being. And with confidence and well-being or wellness, you will have energy. And with energy, you will have what it takes to become or create your true identity. Now imagine this, your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Your only job is to be yourself. That is the greatest freedom. But like I shared before, that takes work. This work works when you do the work. So keep building that confidence. It's a learnable skill and everyone can have it. And if yours is wavering at times, keep building it, keep cementing it, keep solidifying it. Keep taking that confidence or that idea of wanting confidence, more confidence, and putting it into practice. And like you get better at anything that you practice, eventually confidence won't be a thing. It won't be a to-do or a try to have it will become your identity. But like most things, if it's not used, it's lost. So even if you have confidence, keep setting goals and keep having a plan to build and keep that confidence. Because without confidence, you will never have the courage to keep going, to keep trying, to keep failing, to keep becoming. And in going after this life thriving over 40, you need to be honest with yourself. 
you need to be willing to be vulnerable. You need to be willing to let go of fear in the pursuit of your own personal growth, happiness, and harmony. You need to get rid of the fear of being judged. You need to get rid of judging yourself because, as many people say, too many to be honest, it gets a little bit harder when you're older. <laughs> not saying that that not saying that over 40 is old, but things get harder as you get older. You know, I've just had a my most recent my most recent professional Muay Thai Thai boxing fight in a stadium where I fought for a championship belt. And I can tell you now, it was way harder than my in my 30s. <laughs> and it was even harder than in my 20s. So I need to be vulnerable. I need to be honest with myself. I need to be kind. And I also need to be willing to fail. And I need to be willing to face my fears. If I'm going to keep pursuing personal growth, if I'm going to keep pursuing a compassionate life, if I'm going to keep pursuing athletic, athletic excellence, I need to be willing to open myself up to the truth, including vulnerabilities and fear. Thriving over 40. I hope I've given you some good nuggets here for you to take away. I hope that I've helped you maybe raise your awareness a little bit of re or remind you of what you already know. And I hope that most importantly that you put it into action because otherwise listening to this and not doing anything with it makes this useless. Knowledge without implementation is not power. <laughs> and ignorance is not bliss. Take what you can from this. Even if it's one thing. But if you know that there's one thing here that could change your life in even the next year. And you don't do that. That is ignorance. That is delusion. One of the three root causes of our suffering taken from Buddhism or Buddhist teachings. For our life to change, we must change. And until we change, nothing changes. Now, I don't believe in work-life balance. But what I believe in is high-performance balance like a Formula One or a, a race, uh, a, a motor race car. I don't even know how to say it correctly. A Formula One car, a racing car. The most expensive, arguably the most expensive cars in the world with the biggest teams supporting the car or the performance of the car and supporting the driver, the fastest drivers in the world. But one wrong move or one loss of balance on a corner can kill the car and kill the driver. A plane or a jet is getting you from one place to another faster than any other vehicle in the world. But if it loses its balance, it can crash and burn. And I call this high performance balance. I don't believe in work-life balance because I think work-life balance was, is and has been for a long time for people that have jobs that they don't like. Because if you ask people that are doing what they love, they're doing what they're most passionate about, they're living out their purpose. Why would they want a break from that? You know, did Martin Luther King or Mother Teresa ask for a week off? I can't imagine that my first ever hero in my life coming from South Africa, Nelson Mandela, saying that, you know what, I've worked really hard on my, <laughs> on my vision of creating a free South Africa. I think I'm going to take a holiday. I just, I just don't believe that to be true. But Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, these people of powerful purpose could still burn out. And that's why it's important to, especially over 40, as things get a little bit harder, 
it's important to maintain your high performance balance and practice self care. Make self care a sacred ritual, a daily, if you can, a daily sacred ritual. Sacred as in it's almost religious to you. If you're not putting yourself first, you're putting yourself last, or at least you're putting yourself at the back of the queue, somewhere towards the back. What strategies do you have in your life for maintaining your energy, for managing your time and responsibilities effectively? What strategies do you have to check in with yourself? Or what's that saying? To check yourself before you wreck yourself. What strategies do you have? How do you know when you've gone too far left or too far right or too far off course? How do you know when you're close to burnout, stress, overwhelm? Keep self-assessing. I encourage you to meditate every day. And meditation in this teaching, I want you to think of it as meeting your own energy. Meditation is the most important meeting you will ever have because you get to meet yourself. You get to meet your truth. You get to meet your energy and how you're really feeling, who you're really being. And you get to, you get to assess, are you doing too much? Are you doing too little? Are you burning out? Are you stagnant? Is your mental health in check? Is your emotional well-being in check? All of this Clarity can be found in stillness. Stillness is the key to success. One of my Buddhist monks teaches, teaches on that a lot. Stillness is the key to success. You will not find, based on my own life experience and based on me being, or me practicing what I teach, like I said, I want to be someone that walks my talk as best as I can. I don't always get it right. I know that you won't find the clarity that you want in the chaos that you're in. With clients that I've worked with over the years, from group coachings to retreats to private executive level coaching, mostly with business owners and entrepreneurs, I know that the first thing I need to bring them to is clarity. And for that, I need to get them to slow down. Slow down so they can speed up and then keep tweaking and checking in to make sure they maintain that high-performance balance. So start implementing a daily self-care routine. Start setting your 10 non-negotiables or what I call in my coaching, your 10 commandments, your sacred rituals for long-term balance, contentment, inner peace, and harmony so you can live your life fully. We're almost coming to the end of this teaching. I hope that you're taking notes. If not, go back and re-listen to it when you can. And with this clarity and coaching, if you want to call it coaching, commit, 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 commit to making the changes, commit to thriving, never suffering. We are the work. We need to get to work. Suffering is created by us. The four noble truths of Buddhism. One, suffering exists. Two, we create our own suffering. Three, there is a, there is a way and there are ways to end our suffering. And four, there is a path. I've shared some things with you, or I hope you feel I've shared some things with you that can take you from a path or on a path to end your own suffering or to minimize your own suffering and then take you from suffering to maybe surviving and then ultimately thriving. I'm sharing this with you because I know it works because I've been practicing these for many years or these principles, so to speak. And also I've been helping other people take on these principles and these teachings into their own life and see many lives, have seen many lives changed and transformed. Not by me, by the people, by the people that did the work. 
I just show them the path and I can show you the path, but I can't do the work for you. I can give you energy. I can give you inspiration. If we work together, I can give you accountability, but I cannot do the work for you. So create and live by an action plan. Nurture a growth mindset, a success and fulfillment orientated mindset. Keep creating a sense of achievement and growth and self development in you every day or as often as you can. Keep living by your action plans, short term and long term, and keep tracking, tracking your progress. Because like one of my teachers, coaches, mentors have said in my life, Mr. Tony Robbins, who I had the privilege of uh, working alongside or kind of promoting Tony Robbins' events associated with him, representing him on stages, encouraging people to go see the, the big man himself. Like he often says, progress equals happiness. When we feel like we don't, we're not making progress in our life, this is where suffering starts to creep in. So whatever age you are, ask yourself, by my next birthday, what does progress look like? And then create a plan to make that happen and do that for the rest of your life. And then you won't just be existing. You will be living. You'll be living. You'll be achieving. And because you're living, truly living and achieving, you'll be celebrating because you'll be motivated and inspired by how you have committed to living your best life. How you've stuck to the plan and how you've done whatever it takes to keep creating better, deeper, greater versions of you. Get assistance to create a roadmap for the next one, two, three years, five years, whatever works for you. You just need to have something in front of you to look forward to, to make you jump out of bed in the morning and you need to have support. Support to help you continuously grow. Support to help you continue to develop and improve yourself. Support to, help you, to hold you accountable to the strategies for maintaining momentum and making progress each day, each week, each month, each year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And be prepared for future challenges. Be prepared for future challenges. You know, Mike Tyson has a famous quote. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Life will punch you in the face. Maybe your health or lack of health will punch you in the face. Maybe your business, maybe something. Something is coming. Something on its way, is on its way. And that's why I said, build your resilience. Because conf building confidence and everything that I've shared in this teaching, that'll help you thrive. But what is most important is that when life is not going well for you, when you are being challenged, when you are going through adversity, when you are suffering, you need to have the strategies to thrive under pressure. You need to have the strategies to thrive when it matters most, when you're down. And I think it was Rocky's quote, Rocky Balboa, I think. What matters not that you get hit. I think it's not, what matters not is that you get knocked down. What matters is that you get up. I'm not, I'm not even sure if that's correct. But what matters is that you keep getting up. You know, there's a there's a phrase, fallen off the wagon. If you fall off the wagon for whatever reason, it's your fault or it's not your fault. It's out of your control. No amount of complaining about why you have fallen off the wagon or why something has happened to you. No amount of complaining and and excuse my French, bitching and moaning will actually make you feel better. When you fall off the wagon, get back on. When you've been knocked down, get back up. When you've lost your way, take out your compass and get back on the, on the right path. 
and bring yourself back to living with right speech, right thought, right intention, right motivation, right inspiration. Keep doing the work to stay in strength, to keep in momentum, and to stay in your resiliency so that every year just continues to get better and better and better and better. I hope that this inspires you to believe in your potential or believe even more in your potential. I hope that this by taking this and putting it into action, I hope that you're able to witness tangible progress in the next few weeks, because I know if you do this work, the work works. So it should only take two, three, four weeks for you to actually see tangible progress, to see measurable progress. And I hope it brings you more fulfillment in all the areas of your life. By combining these practical tools, by getting support and guidance, you can live truly empowered and you can thrive over 40, live your best life with confidence, health, and fulfillment. I wish you all the best. Till next time.